Mauricio Pochettino says, I am not here to do what the fans want. Today, my friends, I'm here to discuss all the news that dropped post-match after today's 4-2 victory against Leicester City in the FA Cup. So my friends, hit that like button if you guys are happy to see ourselves in the semi-final. Don't forget to watch the big match if you break down behind all the crazy moments that went down in our 4-2 win. And obviously, I hope you guys enjoy the video too. Sit back, relax, and without wasting any more time. Now to start with things, the semi-final draw has been announced. And we are set to play against Man City in the semi-finals at Wembley. Wow. Um, <laughs> I guess it had to be the case. I mean, I was praying that we'd get Coventry City, but we played two games against Man City this season. You know, two incredible end-to-end -end entertaining draws. And it, it does feel like there has to be that deciding winner in these encounters. I'd like to feel like our team is going to be confident. We were very unlucky not to get the result against them. We finally want to secure this W now. And you think to yourself, if you can get past a team like Man City in the semi-finals, that is going to give you some level of confidence knowing that you're playing at Wembley and also you've beaten the favourite to win the FA Cup. I can only pray that Man City's like league form and European demands act as a bit of a distraction. But regardless, you know, when you want to win things in this game for a football club like us, you have to beat the big boys. So this is going to be a massive, massive test. But to be honest with you, I'd rather I'm playing against a Man City compared to a Liverpool, which is a mad thing because we've struggled against Liverpool recently. But against Man City, they seem to raise our game and we seem to play our best football against them. So that is the FA Cup semi-final draw news out of the way. Obviously, you guys, give your predictions. Do you think we're going to beat Man City? And do you think we'll get to the final? Let us know below. Now, after the game, there were some big questions posed towards Mauricio Pochettino. Many things went down in the game, but most importantly was the fan reception to certain in-game management decisions made by Pochettino, as well as the frustration surrounding fans with Raheem Sterling. So I'm going to start off by discussing the main question today, and that was Pochettino not holding back. Now, within the game, when Pochettino subbed off Mudrik to bring on Chukumeka, that decision was met with tons of boos, and fans chanting Pochettino, you don't know what you're doing, you don't know what you're doing. But Pochettino spoke out and gave his account for why he made that certain decision. Poch said, I am not here to do what people want. I am not stupid. I say for me, I saw Mudrik, we analysed him, that he was tired, doing some stretches. We took off Mudrik first. Then we plan to take off Sterling afterwards. So it does seem like there was some confusion and misunderstanding. I do think like as fans, we can probably hold ourselves to account, including myself when I say this, when I say that maybe we view the game a bit differently because it's all about how we have expectations in games and how we manage those expectations. And when you've invested so much time into watching your team too, obviously you hope that the game time that you've invested in is used wisely and is used optimally. We react in the moments what's happening in game. After a game, we can have different opinions. We can recontextualize and reconsider our thoughts. But in that moment, of course, you can only react to what you're seeing in front of you. So I'm not going to say the Chelsea fans are just being negative and being silly and dumb or anything, you know, crass like that. But I can understand why when you're in that moment in the game and you're hoping we can get back and you're seeing Mudrik come off to keep on Raheem Sterling, who hasn't had the best game today. I can understand that, but I do think maybe in the future, maybe all of us can have a bit more patience and understanding around why managers make certain decisions. Because as Pochettino was saying, he was always going to take off both Mudrik and Sterling. He only took off Mudrik first because he seemed more fatigued, but Sterling was always going to come off. But to move on, we have to discuss Pochettino standing up and defending yet again another player this season and today it was Raheem Sterling. Pochettino declared that he supports Raheem Sterling. Now since then, Raheem Sterling also came out to publicly apologise to the fans and he was also later defended by his teammates too. But here's what Sterling had to say. To all the Chelsea fans, apologies for the penalty miss. I'll be back 10 times stronger to help the team win and to continue fighting for the badge every single day. Let's go Blues at Chelsea FC. Now it seems like this apology wasn't accepted by everyone because Raheem Sterling was later defended by Noni Madweke with Noni saying, bro, 
No need to apologize. We appreciate you, G. And you also seem to reply back to someone saying, be quiet, man. People like you are the issue. Kiss my teeth. And you know what? I have no qualms whatsoever. Are players having something to say back? I'm sorry. I don't agree with this fan notion of, you know, we do all the criticizing. And then the moment is shifted back to us, then we start mousing up. And then we start having like weaker, more feebler energy compared to the energy we were showing when we're sending our criticisms directly to these players. I'm not about that. And I just think it's kind of beta in my opinion. So it was nice to see that the players are supporting and defending each other because Sterling's not the only player that's had bad form this season. Let's keep things real. Of course, we have higher expectations around a player that has this experience that's won things before that's been only playing at the highest level since he was like 16 years old and he's also the highest earning wage player here he's the difference maker he's the talisman we are hoping he can be criticism is natural but it needs to be kept at a humble degree it regularly crosses the mark it regularly crosses the line anyway that's what i have to say about the matter Let's focus on what Pochettino had to say about Raheem Sterling. Now, Pochettino said, I think, yes, we need to accept the situation. Like when I tried to explain the situation on the squad, to explain also the fans, we need to accept to agree or not agree. All the fans live on expectation and wanting the best for their club. The feelings weren't good for him, but I'm going to support him. He has an unbelievable CV playing for big teams and experienced player. Today, he missed the penalty and some chances, but we are going to support. Now, do I personally agree with fans booing their own players? Absolutely not, because I think too logically. I just think to myself, if a player's out of form, booing him isn't going to really help when it comes to helping the player regain and find his form again. Now, I have to say that from TV, when Sterling got subbed off in the ends, he was getting a round of applause, but from getting more context from behind, you know, fans who attended the game today, it seemed like Malo Gusto played a big part in getting the fans to applause and support Raheem Sterling as he was leaving the field. So if anything, it reiterates the strong group dynamics within the squad and the family spirit that Pochettino is known for creating in his teams. Pochettino, to be fair, has been consistent when it comes to leaving no man behind. So I'm curious now to see whether Sterling starts the next game against Burnley, a game where he did have a good performance against them earlier this season. And another question on all our minds was, why did Sterling take the penalty over Cole Palmer? Poch says that he supports the decision making that his players make on the field and maybe that tells you that he had nothing to do with this and this was like a, a, a natural thing that happened. Throughout the game though, you also saw Raheem Sterling taking set piece duties as well too. Now we can't forget, you know, probably the worst free kick we've seen this season from any player, Raheem Sterling taking the free kick off Cole Palmer. Now when he was on okay-ish form, he has scored from set pieces this season, but when you're a fan sometimes and you know what the player's going through, you just get a sense and vibe that it's not going to work out for you. And I guess from my own perspective on the matter, when players find themselves out of form, I think maybe the worst thing is to try and force your form back again. I actually think playing simple, taking things easy, playing the game to the basics, that actually allows you to regain your confidence because it's all those bad touches or bad dribbles or bad decision making which ends up costing you in the end, which means that your confidence is going to get affected if you're taking a penalty or if you're taking a free kick. Now for my deduction on the matter, it seemed that the players were back in their boy and Raz and that's why Cole Palmer allowed him to take the penalty because he's thinking Raz, you know, I I'm backing you try and find your form you can have this bro it's a good thing that we weren't punished for this in the end because we can't do this in the latter rounds of the fa cup or even in the premier league but today was a very difficult day for raheem sterling and it's continuing this never-ending poor form you're seeing from him now as i said in my review i respect the guy i respect what he's been through what he's about you know i don't think we should just be too harsh and too disrespectful with our criticisms even though you are allowed to criticize my thing's always going to be let's not over toe the lines let's try and find that balance and i think for my critique i think him coming as a substitute in games now is best for his confidence in the long run because now after seeing what your Khans have done and Madweke's have done, we have players who are now returning back to the team and if these guys are in hot form right now or are playing a lot sharper making things happen for us, 
Let these guys hold minutes right now. I think it really is that simple. I can imagine why maybe Sterling's confidence may be down. Obviously, he was hoping that this would be the big season to book his sport in the Euro squad for England. But at this rate, he was omitted from another squad. And I'd imagine that his confidence really went down even more because... You know, you're going to have some questions with yourself, right, in terms of, I don't want to say crazy things like, is this the beginning of the end? But with the rumours circling that we're looking for maybe buyers in Saudi Arabia for Sterling and the fact that most clubs can't afford to even buy him based on the incredible wages he's on, I think nearly 350000 a week. These are the tough moments to happen with life at a professional level. And maybe Sterling now is having those types of questions with himself. I hold my hands up. I am definitely projecting, but... I try to understand what causes the lack of confidence in the form loss outside of just dead stuff like being overrated, it's not good enough, blah, blah, blah. So you guys, what's your thoughts on Raheem Sterling? And what I wanna know in the comment section from you all, what do you do with Sterling right now? Let us know. Now I wanna end things by discussing one of the fascinating parts of the press conference, and that was Pochettino being question whether we need a new defence because recently our defensive record has not been great. The last time we won and kept a clean sheet came in that 1-0 win against Fulham on the 13th of January. Now outside of that draw against Aston Villa in the FA Cup, we haven't basically kept a clean sheet now in the past 13 games so I'm not surprised that this ask so I'm not surprised that this question was posed towards Pochettino. Now you guys are seeing Pochettino's answer on screen but this is how I'm interpreting what he's saying. Basically, our pressing gets weaker because we have lots of players who are explosive and who like to sprint. And, you know, for myself at times, it does feel like we have more pace than brains when it comes to attacking the opposition. And basically, because of all those explosive sprints, if the ball is lost, there tends to be huge space left in behind, which can be exploited. And obviously, guys like Kaiseido, who's by himself, and the defence tend to get exposed. But we have to remember that great defending is a team effort. And even defending at the back in your defence, that requires great relationships. And I think if there's one thing that is standing out to me more and more, is the lack of that relationship, understanding, and most importantly, communication that you see from the back line. You know, you can have the two best defenders in the world individually, but that doesn't guarantee you're going to have the best defence in the world because you need to have that relationship, partnership, and understanding as a defensive unit. Now this explains that real bad mistake made by both the Sassy and I have to say probably Robert Sanchez as well too because they both went in sync. But as Poch went on to say, he feels like it's hard to find that defensive consistency at this point in time with the individuals that he is using in his first team. Now we know that we have injuries to defenders, we know that midfield players were suspended for this game as well too. Players are returning back to the team. So it was nice to see an offensive lineup, but when you use lots of attacking players, the consequence that you can face is that maybe defensively as a unit, you're not going to be great. And, you know, in the Leicester game, there were so many examples of weak pressing and no pressure where Leicester were able to create an end-to-end -end game against us because we weren't closing them down in packs like we should have. So, you know, they were the key fascinating points in the press conference. So my friends, that is everything. Match review and post-match breakdown news today. I hope you guys definitely enjoy the video. Show us some love if you guys are enjoying the content. Hit that like button always does uh, boost my confidence and it lets me know that you guys are enjoying the content and enjoying what I'm doing. So my friends, enjoy the rest of your Sunday, of course. Good luck for tomorrow on Monday too. And on that note, I am Nini FC. This is Blue Lines TV. I'll see you guys tomorrow with some more videos. Cool.